All right, guys, so we just ended up buying $26,000 worth of silver last night, and we bought a few numismatic items as well. What's cool about creating content online is that you're able to show people what you can accomplish and what problems you can solve for them, right? So if you start making videos yourself, you can show people, hey, we buy high-end coins, we buy bullion, we buy jewelry, we buy watches, we buy diamonds, and that all can come together and show like a collage, like I said, of what you can do for that client and the value that you can provide for them. And so going back to this story, the person that sold us this stuff, it basically they watched our video of buying that big collection in Fort Lauderdale, Florida for around $150,000. And they said, hey, these guys are capable of buying some silver. And so last night, like I said, we bought these and Apart from showing you guys this and talking a little bit about the story, how is this beneficial to you if you want to buy and sell precious metals and how can this create availability for you to make some money as well, right? And that's kind of where we've been approaching things these past few weeks. We mainly do coins, but we're moving into precious metals and we have to start thinking about the different avenues that can be taken to sell silver and gold. And so the two biggest avenues that I've found is that we have wholesale and then we have retail. So when you're taking a look at everything, wholesale and retail obviously are the two buyers in this situation. And the question is, where should you be sometimes, especially in a weird market like this? You know, silver can go up a dollar in a day, it can go down a dollar fifty in a day. And so the amount of instability that it creates, especially when we're in election season, this really can depend on the premiums that you can charge to your customers or what you might need to sell things for to wholesalers. And what we've realized in this market is that wholesalers are buying most of the weight, most of the silver, because the retail market has dried up. You know, when we were sitting at $30, $31 an ounce for silver, maybe a little bit over $31 an ounce, People weren't coming into shops. A lot of people weren't buying a lot of silver. A lot of the wholesalers were the biggest clients for a lot of shops. And so sometimes what you have to consider is what market am I in? Am I in a retail friendly market where the premiums are a little bit higher but the price of silver is lower? Or is the silver so high that the retail market has kind of dried up and the premiums are lower, right? And so with the amount of instability in this market, you have to be able to buy underneath both of these markets. And what does that mean? And so when you're walking into a deal, you have to say, I need a bailout from wholesale or I can retail this stuff and see what happens. And I also have to look at where the market is. If it's very volatile and unstable, that's where the price of silver for me when I buy something has to be a little bit lower to account for that. We bought this silver just safe last night and we bought it around 28.50 and when i woke up this morning silver dropped 50 cents and tomorrow it could drop another 50 cents right uh what we kind of do and focus on primarily is the wholesale sheets for uh, a few different wholesalers that buy a lot of weight buy a lot of silver buy a lot of peace dollars buy a lot of um, min state 64 morgans all these numbers are out there for you to use if you have a resale id number if you have a business and that will allow you to at least see where the market is, what they will buy from you for, and what you can buy it from them for. And you can have that number when you walk into a deal. Another great thing is you can check in with maybe some local customers or customers that you have across uh, different networks and say, hey, I just got this stuff in. Uh, they're selling you know, Constitutional online for 21 or 22 times face, and I wanna sell it to you for 20, or I wanna sell it to you for 20.5, right? offer them a deal and wholesale might be paying 19.5 or 20 times face, right? And so as you start to progress with so much bullion that's out there, there are certain markets and certain situations where you would either have to utilize retail or wholesale. A lot of this stuff will go to wholesale and some amount of it will go to customers that are looking for it. And so I hope this is helpful to you, but when I, Walk into situations, like I said, you need to be able to know what you can sell it for to maybe your customers and what you can sell it to wholesalers for just in case you don't have customers for it. Because if you overquote somebody and you end up buying 
50,000 or 100,000 or $250,000 worth of silver and you're over this wholesale number or you're potentially over this retail number and you're not accounting for instability, that can uh, spell out a lot of problems for you. You can either take an instant loss or you're sitting on a lot of silver that you paid too much for. So I want to talk to you guys about a few rules that we have from this collection. So when you're looking at constitutional, you're looking at a broad range of different uh, coins from different series. Sometimes you might get lucky with a seeded dime that has a hole in it, like this collection, or you might buy some Mercury dimes that are circulated, or you might buy some BU Roosevelt's. Same thing with quarters. You're probably buying BU quarters or AU uh, Washington quarters, and the list can go on and on. The first rule I want to show you is just some cool circulated Mercury dimes. You know, most of the time we'll look for maybe uh, some double dies or whatever, and um, this is just good stuff for people to, to buy. People like the series, and they also like the affordable premium as it relates to the spot price. We ended up buying, uh, which is cool, some BU rolls as well. So if we take a look at some of this stuff, you can see that he actually cut out a few Franklin's from proof sets, and he actually put them in rolls. On the wholesale market, there's not a, a gigantic premium for these. Most of the time, it'll be kind of close or just a little bit above what you can buy other 90% for. Let me see what else there is here. So we have some BUAU Kennedys. Probably pr pulled out of circulation, and that's something that's pretty cool. Just something for people to put in their stack. And as it relates to more circulated stuff, you can see that there's a lot of walkers. You know, common date stuff, but decent looking coins. If someone ever wanted to fill out maybe a set, your customers wanted to maybe put it in their stack, or if uh, you wanted to maybe sell these to a wholesaler or take them to a show. And so the cool thing about buying collections is that you have the availability to find the avenues where people would like to purchase them from you. And so as we progress and grow as a business, we're just gonna be going to more shows. We're gonna have more email marketing out for what we might buy and sell. Uh, long term, we're gonna be just better at buying and selling precious metals. But I hope this lesson was helpful to you guys. Another part of this collection was Proof 67 Franklin Half Dollars. So these are gonna be available next week and let's just start shooting through them. As you know, and if you don't know, early on in the series, the earlier dates within the Proof Franklin series are going to be more expensive, so it's a nice 1950 proof 67. This is going to be the most expensive coin probably in the whole box. As you move further down, the values will decrease just because of you know the mintages and how difficult they are to find. Just overall a great opportunity for us to purchase these. We do have a few people within our, our client list that enjoy Proof Franklins. So we hope to help them finish their set or fill in holes. So again, these will be available next week once we get them priced and processed and everything like that. But just another exciting part of this collection. We are so thankful to bring these to you guys. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Casey. Today we're gonna to talk about a CAX mission that we just got back. I'm gonna show you the highlights from our 35 coin-ish CAX mission. So, get ready for those. So I chose my favorites. Here they are. In our last video around this collection, we talked about how we bought them from the grandson of the person that purchased them from the mint. And as you see on the bottom, there is a 36 proof set. We've already sold off the one cent, which, which is not here. But we decided to send off all the other ones because they looked fantastic. And as you can see, three out of the four cacked, which is highly coveted. Just a uh, recognizable year for proof sets during that era. We cannot complain about how they performed. As we move up to the top row, you can see that we have a low mintage Morgan dollar that got a CAC sticker for a lot of the people that like 
low ball Morgan dollars from you know your key dates that's going to be sold to somebody that really enjoys those as you move over to the classic commemorative the Iowa we sent off I think three or four Iowas and they all came back with CAC stickers which is going to add to any high grade commemorative collector set hopefully into a registry but overall some nice coins flashy coins that look how they should and we can appreciate them all right guys so now it's time for me to show you my favorites so the first one we're going to talk about here is this 1937 proof buffalo nickel an extremely affordable better date proof buffalo nickel that you know people can add to their set and it doesn't get too out of control in terms of price and that's pretty cool and then we have this 1934 boon commemorative half we sent in like I felt 15 boons or something like that. This one didn't get the sticker, but the color is unbelievable. Just had too many ticky marks out in the fields for me for it to pass as a, and get a green bean. And so really love that coin. And the next coin is this 1942 Proof Walker in Proof 67. Has like a cellophane-ish toning to it, probably from when it was held in the Proof set. And it ended up passing at CAC. Just has some unique character to it. And I'm very happy to show you guys and the last Washington quarter here is from 1949 it's great in state 67 once again a coin with nice color to it and you don't see a lot of Washington quarters this high of grade with that nice of color so it definitely exceeds a lot of expectations when you look at this coin in person or if you see it on our website acousticcollectibles.com all right guys wanted to show you a cool coin that we just added to our collection as you guys know we've been looking into seated dollars that are CEC approved, just very passionate about that series and we feel like they're a little bit uh, undervalued and there's not many out there to be picked up. So this is an 1844 seated half dollar with great detail, great originality. As you can see the Liberty is pretty much there in terms of it being seen on the shield and the cool thing about this coin is that there's about 20,000 that were minted so very tough to find in any grade but especially CEC approved and so I don't know, very excited to fill this date in our collection. The collector side in us is still very excited and is still on fire to buy cool coins like this. And so, I don't know, just very fortunate to be able to buy a coin like this, put it in the collection, and also offer cool coins on AkushaCollectibles.com. Thank you guys for watching today's video. We hope that you learned something. We hope that you enjoyed it. Please leave a like, leave a comment on what your thoughts are on the silver and gold market. Just a heads up, we will be in Chicago at the ANA this upcoming week. So if you want to sell us something, if you want to meet with us, if you want to talk about life or our videos, just uh, reach out on Instagram or text us or email us. We'll be ready to talk to whoever is interested.